Hey, so in this video, as we are moving towards learning JavaScript, I'm going to show you two ways that we'll be running our JavaScript and like trying to see what it would be doing. Because right now, as we are getting started, we are not actually going to write, I don't know, like so much code in JavaScript, but we still need to test the small bits that we write and see how like they would operate in an actual web um, development like if we are actually developing a website. So what I'm going to start with is um, when you navigate to projects and you click on new projects, then you select HTML and no CSS uh, framework. So what would show up is uh, this and I, I can select um, a name and I'm going to say sample JavaScript sample JS, JS in short, uh, JS is uh, JavaScript in short. So if I create that, I now have uh, three files. You remember the first time we actually looked at this, I told you to ignore the style.css and the main.js. But I think now you know how to use the style.css because that's for a CSS styling. And then the index.html is where we write all the HTML code. And now we are moving on to the third, which is the main.js. So this is where we are going to write all the JavaScript code that we have. And if I just open the one that was created for me when I've not edited anything, I have a console.log hello world. We are going to see what that does. But before we go there, remember, like when we were dealing with a style.css, we were linking the style.css within our HTML code. For us to be able to see it, uh, we have uh, line 14 here. We have the link, and it's a style sheet, and the href is style.css. So, it means that for anything external, we have to actually create a link between our HTML and that other file that we want to access. And that will hold for the, uh, for the JavaScript. So for us to create the, like the link between the HTML and the JavaScript, we'll be using the script tag. And um, this is how the script tag is written. But of course, when you follow the same steps I just followed, you won't need to worry about this because it's created for you. But I just wanted to put it out there that in case you need uh, your JavaScript within a certain HTML, you will need to include this script um, main uh, script and the source. So for uh, this script, we have the script tag. And within the script tag, uh, the opening tag, we have the source, uh, which is the main.js. And it mainly refers to this uh, file that we have here named main.js. One thing, however, I want to note is when we are calling the CSS using the link and the href, we had that within the head. But you notice now when we are calling the JavaScript or like we are uh, linking the JavaScript through the script tag, we are calling it after all the code, because right now all the code that we have is nothing to see. If I wanted to add another paragraph, of course I would um, just, so if I wanted to add another paragraph, what I would need to do is uh, to put another paragraph here, another paragraph tag, and say this is another paragraph. What this means is that, and you can see that, I mean, the spec editor is really cool. It also provides us this bit to show us that on line 20, it shows us that this is where the project should end. And anything below this is like, okay, the project was, all the code for the project was above. And now after that, after all the code for the project, you run this script tag. So I want to explain why the script tag is run at the end of all the HTML, and yet the CSS is run before. And I can, I will demonstrate this when we have a Zoom meeting next time, but what I, I want to say is that if you link something, remember how the code runs, how the code runs in HTML, it runs top to bottom. It means that line 14, will always run before line 15, and line 15 will run before line 17, 
line 17 will run before line 18. So that means that if I link the CSS above all my HTML code, behind the scenes, my H, my, I mean, yes, behind the scenes, all my CSS will be loaded before the HTML is loaded. And that makes sense because you don't want to load, I don't know, so many paragraphs and buttons without styling, and then they are styled after. That is what would happen if you linked the CSS after the paragraphs or after all the tags that you have, after all your HTML. It would mean, like, run through all my HTML and then style it. But that's not what you want. You want load the styles, and as the HTML is getting loaded, let it read the ID or the class or any selector that has been like styled and let it apply that style. However, for the JavaScript, that is not it. You want it to first load all the HTML, load all the CSS, and then you load the interactivity or the dynamic bits of the website. So that's why the script tag will be after. Well, I'm going to keep this short, so I'm not going to explain anymore. But if we run this right now, there is nothing to see, and that's all we see. And um, so I think you saw something. So you saw this small window pop up here. And the way I activated that was uh, by clicking on the first icon up here. So you have two icons, the one that is more of like, I don't know, like send or something, and the first one, which is like a little window. And when you click on the first one, then it shows up this window. And this, we will mostly be working with the console. And the console will be showing us what our JavaScript, um, like what will be in the JavaScript. And right now it shows hello world. Why does it show hello world? Well, when we go to the main.js, we have console.log hello world. And there you can see first bits first, like let it not confuse you. Hello world is in between quotation marks. And from what we've been reading, quotation marks will refer to a string, right? So that means hello world is a, is a string. Then console.log. Console is, is just the window that we saw when I was running this. So when I run this right now, this window here is going to be our console. And then dot .log is more of like in the console print hello world. And that is exactly what it's doing. So in the console, print hello world. So what if I want to say in the console, print to, it would mean, and okay, another thing I, before I forget, we just like the CSS, at the end of every line of code, we are going to terminate it with a semicolon. Yes, we are going to terminate it with a semicolon. So don't forget your semicolons. And these are like small bits that really like will keep you up till late because let's say you forgot a semicolon. So I'm going to have that semicolon and I'm going to say now console. So I want to log a number two. So I'm going to say console log two. And now with that, I run with my console open, I should expect hello world and two. Don't really mind about the other numbers you're seeing in there. Those are more of like the time. Yeah, and we won't worry about them, but it shows that, okay, at this time, hello world was printed, then at this time, two was printed. And to just move on directly to what we wanted to like print out in the question, it's what would type of two return? So what you're going to do is uh, you will say console.log type, type of, which is a method. So the type of operator, or I just called it a method. Don't worry about method. It's a bit confusing, but that operator will help to tell us whatever you input here is like the type of operator is going to tell you what data type it is. So if I say two, what would I expect there? Two is a number, so I expect number, and that's exactly it. So 
it says the hello world, the two and the number. 